Good morning and welcome to Chargers Talk 4630. We are about to view my very first mock draft for the 2024 season. I also have a co-host that you're about to see soon uh, that will be joining us. His name is Gary Elasser. And uh, I can't begin to thank him enough. Uh, we've been having our chit chats and our talks. And um, when we first talked, we talked for about two hours. And uh, I love uh, his vibe. Um, I like his experience and his knowledge. And I think we're going to be a great tag team together. I think we're going to do really good at hosting Chargers Talk 4630. I also want to give some flowers as well as a shout out the locked on charges. Uh, when I started this journey, maybe a year ago, I was already watching uh, locked on charges. That was the very first charges podcast that I saw. And, um, and I seen those guys and I was like, wow, that's something that I would like to do that. I would like to be able to have a podcast and talk about um, the team that I've been loving for over 46 years with the diehard fans that are out there. And uh, I did reach out. They probably don't remember, but I reached out to Daniel Wade and, and Dave Drugelmeyer and um, and chatted with them for a little bit. Not really over the phone, but through email. And uh, we talked for a little bit. I still support their show. And um, I know that uh, Mr. Wade had a, a issue uh, with his daughter not feeling well and wanted to give him a shout out and and let him know I'm glad his daughter is doing fine and glad he's back on uh, the show with Dave, who did a good job with holding things down. And we were praying that God put his hands on your daughter and healed her from whatever she was dealing with. So now that that's over, let's get into this mock draft and let's meet my co-host. And I hope you guys enjoy it and welcome our new co-host, Garrett Elasser. Enjoy. Hello, I'm Stacey Mallory representing Charters Talk 4630. Before I get started, I want to remind you to press the like button, give a thumbs up, hit the notification button on the right, and please don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss a show or a podcast. It doesn't matter if you're a Chargers fan or not. Everyone who listens to us and supports us is always welcome here. And welcome to another edition of Charters Talk 4630. I am so excited today. This is a, a feel-good moment for me today because this is the first time that I'm publicly doing a mock draft. And I want to remind you people that I'm not Harbaugh. I'm not Joe Ortiz. This is not real. All of us that love the Chargers, ride or die with them all day long, and twice on Sundays, we're having fun. Until the draft actually gets here, we enjoying ourselves. We enjoying the, the Charger family. I enjoy all the people that subscribe to the show. I enjoy all the interaction and the comments, the DMs that people send me. I'm really having a good time, and I couldn't do this and have the fun that I'm having without you guys. So, again, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. But, again, this is not the draft. The draft is two weeks away. We're having fun. So people don't start going crazy and pulling your hair out, saying, why the hell after he chose this guy? Why did you leave him on the board? Let's relax and let's have a little bit of fun. So not only am I going to do a mock draft, I want to introduce someone that before he knew who I was, before we ever had a conversation, he's always been in support. I've seen him on X reposting my podcast and encouraging people to come and, and subscribe so that they can see what kind of uh, content that we have here. So I appreciate that much. But with no further ado, I'm getting ready to welcome my new co-host. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome right. Garrett. What's up, Bolt fam? Garrett Elsasser here. I just want to give you a little background about myself before we get into this mock draft that our boy Stacy's cooked up. Um, I've been in the Navy for 16 years. I'm originally from Southern California. Uh, it's, I'm currently on deployment. Can't really say where yet, but, uh, <laughs> been in the Chargers family since 2007, been rooting, uh, LT, Phillip Rivers, Malcolm Floyd, Vincent Jackson, Antonio Gates, all those guys, the powder blue jerseys currently stationed in Jacksonville, Florida, not married, no kids. I know that's a big red flag now, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm uh, Stacey, I'm, I'm excited to be on the show. Uh, thank you for reaching out, and it's been an honor and a privilege getting to know you, get your knowledge down, and work with you. And I want to attack this show with an enthusiasm unknown to mankind, man. We got to put that on a shirt. 
Just everybody. <laughs> yeah, just, you know. Oh, yeah. I love, your hoodie. I, I love it. Hallbar is coming in and, and establishing a culture right from the door. This is uh, look way. what we're doing. Look, we're, yes. we're saying things that he says. He's quirky. Yes, yes. You know, kind of yeah. now I see I didn't really listen to Hallbar much. And I hear a lot of people say, oh, using words like he's weird, he's strange, he's quirky. Oh, yeah. he's and I say, why, why people? But when I saw his press conference, the first 10 minutes, I didn't know what the hell he was talking about, you know, but so I now I see what people are talking about. I'm happy he's here, man, because I think for years we've always been a very talented team. Always. Absolutely. Whether it was Absolutely. Rivers, whether it was Justin Herb, we always in the top five with scoring points. We just couldn't get the other side of the ball right. Yeah. We could never stop the run. We weren't good in the trenches. And I think that he's bringing in people that could win in the phone booth. You know what I mean? Yep. And and, um, and and I think we need that so bad, man. You need that. If you're going to take down the Chiefs within the next two years, if you want to take down the Buffalo Bills with Josh Allen and go toe-to-toe with those guys, I mean, when you want to do that with the 49ers and the Baltimore Ravens, you have to yeah. be physical. You do. You have you do. to be physical. I think that um, all the pieces we brought in with the staff and with, with, with Hortiz – I think it was still being able to bring Hortiz over because, hey, nobody done it better than DaCosta and Ozzie. No, he he learned he learned from the best, and I think yes. that um, this is going to be a regime change that we get, and it actually sticks. It's not we've always been so hyped up, and Brandon Staley's a players coach, and but Jim Harbaugh's a players coach, but also a coach's coach, and he That's knows right. how to rally the whole building and not just the locker room. Right. So right. I I think we're we're gonna we're gonna see something change here, and it, it, we just you know strap in and enjoy the ride because I I have yeah. nothing but high expectations. I don't think I've ever been this excited as a Chargers fan. I don't. It, I, it, this is like legit excitement. Let's get this draft underway, my man. Yes. Well, listen. Let me just say thank you for accepting the offer. I did talk to maybe two or three more people, and um, there there was a connection. I think we talked for like maybe two hours when we first started talking yeah. on the phone and um and the conversation went great so i already knew a, a vibe was already created i knew we would do well um i think the people going to enjoy you here and um first and foremost thank you for your service man thank you for everything you do you. Thank to, you. To, to protect us here in this country so um yeah so i'm, I'm excited man uh, i'm excited to get going and, and do this first mock draft and let people just Go at it, you know, because oh, I, you yeah. know, well, you know, they're gonna they're gonna jump all over it. But um, hopefully, the um, lock is safe. Yes, hopefully, <laughs> when it's all over, it's all said and done. People just know that this is uh, a way that we just like to have some fun. Uh, it's not a lot to do leading up to the draft, and this is what everybody's talking about. Everybody been releasing their mock draft, so I'm gonna release mine tonight. And um, I'm not gonna release all the names yet, as we'll announce them, and then afterwards I'll post. Um, the finished uh, uh, mock draft, and then the next podcast, you'll present us with your mock draft. And absolutely, yeah. And so uh, I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to have you here. I think I made the right choice. You know, I, I, <laughs> no pressure, and, right? And let's just attack it like yeah, enthusiasm unknown to mankind. Maybe let's go. go. Let's go. go. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's let's get it started. We got the Chargers picking at five, but I think I think, and this is a hunch. Okay, okay. <laughs> I think the Chargers are doing this little thing called a trade back with the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. Okay. And at five, the Chargers pick is in, and it is a trade with the Minnesota Vikings. The Chargers take their fifth pick and fall back to 11, also gaining a 23rd first-round pick as the Vikings jump up to five. But we don't care who they pick because we're picking at 11 now. And then at 11, we have out of Oregon State offensive tackle, Talese Fuaga. Yes, Garrett, this is who I'm taking with the number one pick. Jim Harbaugh wants a mean, nasty, and physical offensive line, and they don't get no mean or nastier than this guy right here. Talese Fuaga, offensive tackle from Oregon State, stands out at 6'6 and weighs 334 pounds. He's a three-star recruit from Mount Tohama High School. He only played limited snaps in three games as a rookie. His sophomore year, he played 12 games and 744 snaps and gave up zero sacks. He dominates in the run game, shows great size and strength to overpower defenders. 
At 6'6", 324, he shows elite explosiveness and range and shows rare agility and quickness for his size, especially in his movement to the second level. A nasty, tough guy with skills that fit what Harbaugh is trying to install on this offensive line. I believe a soon replacement at right tackle for Trey Pipkins. What do you think, Garrett? I, I think you you hit the pick spot on. I mean, 6'6", 324, a, a guy that big who can move that light on his feet. Uh, he's got that combination of strength, speed, that that prowess to be light on his feet. I think he's a little little undersized in the sense of his arm length, but outside of that, I think it's a spot on pick. And I think that to go with the cliche that we have, it's a it's a Harbaugh mm-hmm. guy. Everyone likes to use that phrase, but he's nasty. He's nasty. Yeah. And when you're in the AFC West, I mean, you see all you got the Max Crosby's of the world. Like we need to protect Justin Herbert, and that's how you start. Absolutely, I know there's a lot of people that's out there that probably is bothered by this pick or the trade back, should I say, because everybody wants to take neighbors or Marvin Harrison, if he was still there or Roma Duce. And trust me, I would love to have any one of those guys on the receiving end of Justin Herbert's passes. But Harbaugh has been preaching this since he he's come on board. He's been preaching nastiness, physicality, you know, so you know what he wants to do. When you look at how he has built his teams over the last four teams he's had, they've been dominated. They, they can run in the trenches. They, they run the ball downhill and the receivers are asked to do a lot of blocking. So you're correct about its arms may be a little short. I did see uh, some experts say that, but I also say that Rashawn Slater, who's our all pro left tackle. He had those yeah. same issues or so coming out of college and it hasn't bothered him at all. So I like this pick, man. I think we need another right tackle. I love how Harbaugh is attacking this. Absolutely. And you explained it well, man. Like, yeah, I think that it, the short arms thing is just someone trying to say that, you know what, it's not an A plus. Oh my gosh, you can't miss kind of pick. There's some concerns, but I think in the right scheme and with, you know, Greg Roman's offense, I think it's, you can't miss when you pull right. a lineman like that. So, right. and I, I, I like the pick a lot, especially in a trade back scenario where we're trying to garner some draft capital. So that's round one. Let's. <laughs> so at the 23rd pick, the Los Angeles Chargers select Edgerin Cooper, linebacker, Texas A&M University. Six, two, what a 230 pounds out of Texas A&M was a four-star recruit, ranked 115th nationally and ninth among linebackers. Became the cornerstone for his defense. By his sophomore season, he had 39 tackles while showing great skills in both coverage and as a pass rusher. He even got better in his junior year, getting 50 tackles, leading to his senior year, where he dominated with 58 tackles, 56 stops, and 10 sacks. Edrin Cooper earned AP All-American and first team all SEC honors in 2023. He has elite overall athleticism, incredible burst and speed combined with long arms. He shows promise as a pass rusher, has the size and length for a modern wheel linebacker with the ability to make big plays and finish tackles. What do you think? I, I, again, I, I think that this is one of the most unorthodox picks at this position because yes. because I think that no one's expecting linebacker in the first round in the trade back scenario because we have so many positions. We have Denzel Perriman who we just got in, and I think this would be a young guy who can come in and learn Minter's scheme and execute it to perfection. You saw those highlights. He's insane. He's an absolute animal. Someone to play off ball like that, but then also shoot the gap and hit the quarterback the way he does. That, I mean, the defense is going to feed off that every single time. I think that, I think uh, the raw athletic score that they gave him was an 8.96. And then those sacks that he had playing off ball, he's explosive, man. I I, I love the pick. I know it was kind of, um, people weren't expecting to see a linebacker pick, but I'm just looking at, the Chargers roster as it currently states. We don't have any linebackers. Kenneth Denzel. Murray, John, <laughs> yeah, when, and Denzel really is a is a really good piece. He may start some games if we have a couple of rookies out there. He do have the experience, but Edrin Cooper reminds me, remember when we drafted Kenneth Murray yes. and they moved up two spots out of the second round and moved into the first round and took Kenneth Murray. And although he underperformed and probably was badly coached under Brandon Staley uh, with his uh, complex schemes. He have the same body structure 
as Kenneth Murray. Yes. His pursuit to the ball, he had bursts, he had speed, he had thumper when he get there. Kenneth Murray had all those things with Oklahoma, but for, un, for some reason, it never transferred to the NFL on the field. But this guy here, we are very thin at linebacker, and that's the reason why I decided to go linebacker with this pick. Absolutely. And I respect that because I think the biggest thing that we've learned is that you can't just assume that you have one person playing because injuries happen. And as a Charger fan, we all know it, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Okay. So maybe we have Dayon Henley and we have Denzel Perryman coming in. But if one of those guys goes down, what are we doing? We're, we're using an undrafted free agent to slide in the spot or we're hawking the waiver wire. So right. I, I mean, you bring in a top tier because after the first three linebackers, uh, the, it's kind of, it's downhill from there in terms of how the quality that you're getting. Yeah. So yeah. Edger and Cooper there, especially in that trade back again, we mentioned it, draft capital and right. getting those assets. So I, I, I like the pick. And with the 37th pick in the 2024 NFL draft, the Los Angeles Chargers select wide receiver Brian Thomas Jr. out of LSU. Yes, at pick 37, losing Keenan Allen and Mike Williams were big losses. But here's a guy that should help fill part of that boy that 6'3", 209 pounds. He's a big target for Justin Herbert. Brian made an immediate impact in his freshman season in 12 games, recording 28 receptions with 359 yards, averaging 12.8 yards per reception and scoring two touchdowns. In 2022, Thomas managed 27 catches for 330 yards, averaging 12.8 two yards per catch along with four touchdowns he exploded in his junior year as he made 68 catches for 1177 yards averaging 17.3 yards per catch and scoring 17 touchdowns his performance was highlighted by an elite quarterback rating when targeted of 148.8 showing significant growth and potential as a top tier wide receiver prospect and for what i can see he has natural explosiveness and is able to create separation. It's a big red zone target, has excellent ball tracking skills, and it's a threat on downfield passes. I love this pick. If we land this pick in the second round, yeah. you know, yes. I'll be doing backflips. <laughs> <laughs> I think Brian Thomas has been shooting up most draft boards just because of his, his combine performance and you're starting to realize how fast he really is. Yes. Uh, he ran a he ran a four three three forty. Yes. Yes. And uh, seventeen touchdowns last year. He was in the he was a semifinalist for the Blitnikoff. Yes. The man is insane. And I think that when you have two wide receivers on one team that are semifinalists and finalists for the best wide receiver in college football, you know you're getting a good pick right there. Yes, he just got better and better every year. He got the prototypical size for a wide receiver. He has good speed. You know, he creates separation, kind of sort of remind me of Mike Williams, but a little faster. You know what I mean? Yeah. And losing Keenan Allen and losing Mike Williams, those were two big losses. So all you really have is Joshua Palmer and Quentin Johnson, and hopefully he makes that next leap. But with Brian Tom, he's a big-time playmaker, and he's somebody that Harbaugh can use in the system because he don't cost a lot. Any receiver you get, I know people screaming for Justin Jefferson and screaming for all these other different guys, but these guys want to break the bank. Right now, Harbaugh and Hortiz got us out of cap hell. You don't need to go back and spend money like that again. So I love this pick right here, and you're right. If he's here... You have to take him off the board if he's there. there there's, yeah, I, I, I would be shocked. And if he is, and if we didn't take him, I would just, I don't know what I would do. Right. <laughs> I also pulled this stat, and it, the, he, the highest percentage of targets to result in a first down or a touchdown with at least 50 plus targets last year. Right. Number one, Roman Wilson. Number two, Brian Thomas. So right. that shows you, in terms of everybody wants these big play guys, these home run hitters, you can get those guys later in the Absolutely. draft like we just did. So Absolutely. case in point. This is a really, really deep wide receiver group here. There's a number of guys that can fall right in your lap, but, you know, I get it. Everybody wants the three that they're hyping up the most, but that doesn't mean if you don't get neighbors or you don't get a doomsday or you don't get Harrison, that doesn't mean – in the second and sometime probably the third round that you still can't find a very good receiver. The Chargers have another trade in. Chargers trade round six and seven in the 2025 NFL draft to the Indianapolis Colts in exchange for their 2024 46th round two pick. And with that selection, the Chargers select 
Blake Corum, running back. 5'5", 205 pounds. Don't let the size fool you. Blake Corum is a workhorse, Garrett. He got 944 rushing yards on 144 carries and averaged 6.6 yards per carry while scoring 11 touchdowns. His skills as a receiver were also pretty good with 24 catches out the backfield. 2022, he became the lead back for Michigan. Even though he dealt with knee injuries he battled through, he still racked up an impressive 1,461 rushing yards on 248 attempts, averaging 5.9 yards per carry, and he found the end zone 18 times. While his numbers in the passing game are nothing to brag about with only 10 catches, his dominance on the ground was clear. Corum continued his strong performance into his senior season in 2023, where they became national champions, and his level of resilience and consistent performance has caught the attention of many NFL scouts. Corum will be a great change of pace back coming in for Gus Evans. I like this pick, Garrett. What do you think? Another hard guy. That, I, I think literally a hard guy. <laughs> 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 Went to school with him or something. But <laughs> Um, I think that in every mock draft, if you're a Chargers fan and you don't have a Michigan player coming to the Chargers, you're wrong. So right. Right. <laughs> it's had to happen. Yeah. Um, Blake Corum, great vision. You see it. He's got great leadership on the field. His change of pace is great. And he's patient. He's a patient back. He doesn't just shoot the gap and try to run downhill right away. He'll wait till his gaps open up and then shoot it. Uh, the, again, the thing that is just his size a little bit, but he, I mean, he's been relatively healthy and his long speed, but we don't need that. We have, we're, it's going to be a power running game. I mean, with Gus Edwards and Blake Corum back there. That's that's nasty. That's a nasty one-two yeah, punch. It is. So you still got Joshua Kelly and Isaiah Spiller, whatever way Absolutely. that's going to work. And they have a couple of years experience. Blake Corum, man, he's before he had the, the knee injuries, he was having a hell of a year, man. But we got a workhorse. Yep. And he can run between the tackles. And Blake Corum, don't get it wrong, he, he's strong enough to run between the tackles too. He's not going to give you that much in the receiving department. But Harbaugh wants to establish an attitude. The defenders to have nine men in the box, and you know that they're going to run the ball, and you still can't stop it. He wants to have – we never had an identity since – Marty Schottenheimer. And with Blake Corum added to the mix with Joshua Kelly and Isaiah Spiller leading the way with Gus Edwards, I like the yeah. running back room right now. I really, really do. I think with that pick, you kind of – you to alleviate the need. That's four running backs so that we can, you know, start in calibers. Kelly, he stepped up. He had that big run against the Chiefs last year. He showed flashes. Yeah. And I think we do this with the, the O-line and we build that Greg Roman scheme, that Harbaugh scheme where we're playing tough football – Everyone's right. going to flourish. I believe that. I like the pick. How do you think uh, my mock is going so far? Some surprises, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, some surprises. I think that uh, I think Brian Thomas dropping a little bit. I mean, we, again, we see we see this all the time. Uh, we yeah. have these surefire first round guys that dropped to the second or third. I seem to remember another wide receiver that was supposed to be in the first round. His name was Keenan Allen, and he ended up dropping to the third. Third, and right. I mean, granted, that was an ACL tear that made him fall, but right. the, it, the draft is unpredictable, and we don't know what's going to happen. If we, if we get Brian Thomas there, I'll be stoked. Absolutely. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and in round three, pick 69, the Los Angeles Chargers selects Chris Jenkins, Michigan. Defensive tackle. Yes, Chris Jenkins is a spot right here for me. This is the position the Chargers have been rotating different guys for too long and yet to replace the dominance it was once occupied by Jamal Williams. Ortiz gives Harbaugh another one of his guys that he knows what he expects as he's coached him throughout his collegiate career. Chris is the son of Chris Jenkins Sr., a dominant four-time Pro Bowl defensive tackle for the Panthers and Jets. He started his collegiate career in 2020 after being redshirted his first year. He made his first career start in 2021 season before becoming a full-time starter by 2022. In his senior year, Jenkins continued his stellar play in the Wolverines defense, playing in 13 games and logging 344 snaps. He added 27 tackles and 15 total pressures, established himself as a key player in Michigan's defense. Jenkins has continued the family legacy in football and has adapted his own style, showing potential in various defensive roles and techniques. Here's what I like the most about him and what I see on film. Jenkins is tough against the run, hard to push around due to his solid stance and strength, good at reading and reacting to blockers' moves. He doesn't get fooled easily and holds his ground, and he appears to have the hand strength and technique to control his matchups, giving him an edge in the trenches. He's a hardball guy, and I really like him.
another hardball guy, but hey, Chris <laughs> Jenkins was still on the board. We needed another defensive tackle. Uh, I liked Austin Johnson, who we had last year, was a big body. He helped out with the run game, but he got hurt too many times. And hopefully Chris Jenkins can stay healthy and could bring that enforcer attitude that we need on that defensive line. Too many gadgets yeah. up the middle in the run game the last couple of years. Yeah, and I think I, at the end of the day, that that Staley scheme, it, it just I think everyone just looked at their worst. And who knows if it was a player's fault or the scheme's fault, combination of both. But I, needless to say, uh, in this Jesse Minter scheme, I think that the, the run game does get uh, a little bit stronger. And, you know, Chris Jenkins standing at 6'3", 300 pounds is going to be a, a huge help to that. And you hit the nail on the head. You know, that that film review was pretty spot on. It took the words like right, right off my note sheet. He's a great tackler. He's great against the run game. Yeah. Uh, a Michigan guy. I think, again, it's another steal in round three if we can get him there. Um, I, I think that he can play all across the D-line. He doesn't have to play a one-tech, a two-tech. He can, he can move around. Uh, and we still have Morgan Fox, who right. who's kind of been that low key underrated guy, and he makes those big plays in crunch time. So I think yeah. that'll really strengthen the D line there. Yeah, we definitely need that. Morgan Fox is uh, I've always liked Morgan Fox. He got a high motor, you know. He constantly goes. I love him. He still can make plays at this point in his career. But we definitely needed some help on that defensive line. The runs that we were getting gashed with, man, was just sometimes yeah. I was just sick watching it, you know. So. It's time. Harbaugh knows. Harbaugh coached these guys. And, you know, I didn't want to go Michigan crazy, but um, most of these guys that are that come to the NFL are coaches. He know what he got with Chris Jenkins. And Jenkins know what's expected of him uh, from Harbaugh. And um, I like the pick. You know, I hope everybody else like it, too. Uh, yeah, I, I'm. You know, I'm sure they will. There'll be some that like it, and there'll be some that say something else. But you know how the mocks go. Right. I think that the biggest thing is, and we talked about this briefly. Uh, offline, and I think that Harbaugh scouted. I mean, you could probably say all these guys that are coming yeah. to this draft class. So yeah. you know, he's had words with them at one point or another. So he knows these people quite a bit. Right. In comparison to every other coach who's just now starting to study up on these guys, he's been studying them for years. That's so right. a huge advantage coming into this draft. So anytime that when the, however the draft falls, I'm going to put my faith in Jim and just know right. that he's attacking That's the it. draft and that we know what he's going to do. That's it because. Our two biggest issues, we couldn't run the ball and we couldn't stop the run. And that got us in a lot of trouble. So yeah. uh, I like the pick. Here. I really got to work on my announcer voice. <laughs> pick 105, the Los Angeles Chargers select Nate Wiggins, cornerback out of Clemson. Yes, Gary, at pick 105, I'm taking Nate Wiggins from Clemson. The Chargers needed to add more corners. They recently signed Christian Fulton, who previously played with the Tennessee Titans, who's also a former second-round pick himself. But the Chargers are still thin at that position, and Nate Wiggins takes this spot. Wiggins may need to put a little more size on his frame as he's currently listed as 180 pounds, but he's 6'1". He ran a 4'28 in the 40-yard dash at the combine, so he has some speed, and Wiggins' junior year solidified himself in the secondary. With 23 tackles, four pass breakups, two interceptions, and allowing a 44.4 quarterback rate and when targeted. He excels at managing and contesting vertical routes while maintaining positioning and showcasing competitive aggression at the catch point. He displays quickness and agility in his movements with a knack for timing and anticipation in pass defense. He has physical attributes and coverage skills to limit offensive options and create challenging throwing lanes for quarterbacks. I like this pick with the Chargers here at pick 105. I Listen, he may not be the popular guy that everybody wanted, but I'm trusting my eyes and what I saw. He's a small guy, but he got a thump. He bring a pop when he get there. He have good speed. You saw some of the highlights that I just showed. The guy's a playmaker. He got a knack for the ball, and he loved to hit. I love the pick. He was on the board. I had to take him. The thing I have for this, and now a lot of people – Probably, I think he was up there in rankings before the combine. He was the one that hurt his hip flexor after that, yes. that 40, after that 429 40, mind you. Right, they right. Burnt through it and then, then hip flexor. Right. You know? <laughs> but, uh, you know, a hip flexor, um, I haven't heard any reports about it. I don't think it's anything too serious. I think he's going to be just fine come training camp. Um, the thing that sticks out for me is he's 20. This right. kid is 20 years old. He runs a right. 4 2 40, 6 one, 173. There's a guy in our locker room. I don't know if you heard of him, Ben Herbert. 
He's gonna yeah. he's gonna put some pounds on this guy. Everyone wants to knock his size. Say he's a little right. th- no. You you call him a thumper. Put put ten pounds on him. He's gonna be making those tackles. Absolutely. And he I think he's he's a minor developmental player, but I think it's a solid pick. I think so too, man. I mean, I didn't want to see anybody's the experts draft board. I didn't want that getting in my head. I wanted to test myself and yep. pretend that I'm not a fan to pretend I'm a GM and just trust what I see on the film. And um, I see a playmaker there. And you're right. I was saying earlier, he need to put on a couple of pounds and Harbaugh have the right people in place. That's going to take care of that, the strength and conditioning coach, and they'll beef the guy up a little bit. And maybe he won't make much of an impact year one. And they still have a lot of work to do in the cornerback room. But yeah. building for the future, in another two years, this guy put on some weight. And with the right coaching, I think he could be um, a future playmaker in this league. And I, that's why I took him with this pick. I, I, I like it. I think that, again, we mentioned the size. And I think that we saw this with – Asante Samuel Jr., just that support in the run game. If you're a smaller frame, it's a lot harder for you to get off those blocks initially. And you talk about those big runs that we give up. I mean, the Jaguars playoff game, it was just, you see that and you're kind of like, all right. So yeah. that aside, great player. And I think he had three career picks and yeah. two of them were returned for a touchdown. So Absolutely. that speed yeah. is game breaking. That's yes, game breaking speed when you can get that kind of stuff on. And Harbaugh plays his young guys. So he don't believe if you if you can play, He'll coach him up and he'll have him in there. I mean, yeah. he knows the guys that he needs to bring on his team that can make a difference. And uh, the guy got the speed. He has good coverage skills and uh, and he can hit. And when you can do those things, you'll get they'll find a spot for you on that roster. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm excited for this one. I saw this and I was like, whoa. <laughs> I know I am. I don't know how other people may feel, but um, I like them a lot. Okay. All right. With the 110th pick, the Los Angeles Chargers select Jaheim Bell, tight end, Florida State. Hey Garrett, this is a safe pick for me right here. The Chargers have brought in, as you know, a couple of tight ends in free agency and Hurst and Disley, and currently still have Donald Parham on the roster. There has been a strong emphasis to running the ball and using two tight end sets to help with the blocking schemes. Another tight end gets added to the roster in Jaheim Bell. Although still raw and needs to be coached more and working on his blocking techniques, he has shown his talents, notably in his sophomore year with 497 receiving yards, five touchdowns with 30 receptions. Last year, Florida State, he made an impact with 39 catches for 503 yards for an average of 12.9 yards per catch, two touchdowns, and an excellent quarterback rating when targeted of 117.7. Bell, recognized for his versatility, was a three-star recruit and earned second-team All-ACC honors in 2023. He's a guy that excels in his pass catching ability. He displays decent directional changeability and contact balance, enabling him to navigate through defenders and maintain possession after contact. He can learn under the toolage of Hurst and Disley while learning the nuances of playing in the NFL. I like this piece. Jaheim Bell. I like the, the the film, though. You went really went to the archives because you saw some Gamecocks yeah. footage there. Yeah. You saw some yes, Florida right. State footage there. That's, right. <laughs> That's, That's how you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that was one of my talking points is that he he is a not just a traditional uh, tight end, but he could play that fullback halfback role, too. I think he yeah. can move all over that line of scrimmage. He's very much a, a receiving tight end in that sense. Yeah. Um, I Yes. And I, I know he can run block. I know he's fine with that. But I think that's where he excels is him out in open space, those quick screens. Yeah. And he's a I mean, he's six two two forty runs a four six. It's yeah. that's that's nasty. I mean, we have hurts. We got Disley. We have uh, Parham. Look, we have guys that were brought there specifically for blocking in that yeah. system. And uh, we needed someone with some pass catching skills. This guy, what he has done, and he wasn't a starter. And he put up last year 500 something yards on 40 something yeah. catches. You see the highlights. The guy could run pretty good and get open. He got some wheel to him. You know what I mean? He He's pretty good. I think we need that. You, everybody come there. Tight ends can't just block. You're going to need somebody to go out there when it's third and eight, third and ten. You need to move the chains for Justin Herbert to have somebody to go to. We know Keenan Allen was that guy that he always yep. went to. That was his blanket right there. Well, he needs another safety say. net. If Jaheim Bell can come in 
and can learn pretty fast and get up to speed with the playbook and and they could throw him out there. I think he can be maybe midway through the season. I think this guy could um, make a name for himself in this offense. Absolutely. And I think that doesn't give him that pressure where he has to come in and start right away. He's got a, the depth chart to work up, which as you know, any rookie right. does and every coach will say they got to earn their spot. But I think that he actually will. I think he's, he possesses a lot of the traits that you would look for in that tight end that uh, almost like a Vernon Davis. I know Vernon Davis trying to four, four out of Maryland, but he's yeah. still got that yak ability and having that yeah. weapon to stretch the middle of the field is un, uh, understated for sure. You know, who he reminded me of a little bit watching him who, Gerald Everett. Yeah, yeah. He's you know, got a young break, Everett. Breaking tackles, not wanting to, you know, go down with the first contact. I saw a lot of yeah. Gerald Everett there. So uh, I wish yeah. I wish we could have held on to him, too, because I, I think he was one of the most underrated chargers that we've had in recent years. He, he was solid. And the way he played, he played so physical, and he never wants to go down. And I no. thought he was a hardball type guy. Exactly. I, and I think it was just a money thing. Yeah. yeah. Got to fix that salary cap. Right, absolutely. Yeah. With the 140th pick, the Los Angeles Chargers select Drake Nugent, center, also out of Michigan. <laughs> yeah, Garrett, I think this is another solid pick, especially since losing all-pro center Corey Lindsley due to a career-ending injury. Drake started his college career with Stanford and transferred his senior season to Michigan, where he was groomed under Jim Harbaugh and had a really good season. In 13 games, he played a total of 729 snaps for the Wolverines. He allowed seven quarterback hurries, one quarterback hit, no sacks while playing at center. He won't have to start right away as he will sit and learn behind the recently required veteran center Bradley Bozeman. Nugent has some nastiness to his game. He sustained blocks through the whistle and has shown to play well in the phone booth. Appears to play well in the screen game because of his instincts to deceive defenders and mobility to get out in front and land blocks. Many scouts have said that Nugent has a high football IQ, handling protection calls at the line of scrimmage, and understands blocking angles. I think he's in a good position to learn behind an experienced veteran like Bradley Bolton. I like Drake Newton. I don't know if he will still be there in the actual draft, but um, I don't. I personally don't think he's ready to come in and start right now, which that's why I think it was a good move. We got a veteran. Yeah. With Bradley Bozeman, um, he didn't really play a lot until his senior season. He showed high football IQ. He did a great job of keeping McCarthy upright. So he got the skills. He have all the intangibles. He just don't have the experience yet because he really didn't play a lot until his senior season. But having him continue to learn under the tutelage of Harbaugh and learn behind a veteran center like Bradley Bozeman, who was a very, very good center. I think we might have a future. Remember Nick Hartwick? He kind of remind yeah. me of Nick Hartwick, you know, when That's... he was blocking for Philip Rivers and Ladeon Thomason at center. He kind of remind me of, of Nick Hartwick. So I think that with a year being in the NFL, getting up to speed with the, the, the how the NFL is played, and I think we got a steal here if you can – get him here with this pick some people think he's going to be gone much earlier i don't know he may fall i mean the guy only played his senior year he played very good as i did my homework on him he didn't really play much until last year with michigan so yeah i uh i think i'm gonna have to do some homework on that because i thought that i wrote down i think i had, he had 39 games between michigan and stanford maybe that's why maybe i don't know if we yeah. looked up the michigan stuff but i think yeah the the I don't know if that's the game started or if that's the games that, you know, he was just on the roster. Right. But I know that he is a very, very sticky blocker. He is someone that once he right. gets his hands on it, you're not getting by him. Right. Now, again, it, it, he's 6'1". Six 6'1", one. Six one as a center, is a little little stout. But I think that yeah. – um, and you said, like, the Nick Hardwick. If we get a Nick Hardwick with him, uh, we are set. Like, you know right. what I mean? <laughs> we all Absolutely. remember Nick Hardwick, and that's such a right. – he's a legend in the Chargers fandom. So. Yeah, no doubt. I think yeah. Nick Hart was even back on the roster now, right? As a coach. Yeah, he's uh yeah, Office he's doing my coach or something. Yeah, he's doing something uh on in the, the coaching staff for sure. Just like they got Navarro Bowman for linebackers coach. Right. And I like that too. Yeah. I like that. Assistant offensive line coach. That's what Nick Hart okay. was doing. Okay, yeah. okay. That's good. I like the fact that they're bringing some of the the old heads that 
what great play exactly is it's going to establish the culture so much especially oh, i mean everyone that they're doing the angles that they're taking is going to build that locker room yes 100 <laughs> yeah. percent. with the 181st pick the los angeles chargers select ajayi hall wide receiver out of texas yeah garrett i'm going with the 6'3 195 pounds ajayi He's a big frame with average speed in 2021 as a freshman. Hall saw action in seven games for the Crimson Tiders. He only made four receptions for 72 yards, an average of 18 yards per reception with no touchdowns. I agree. Although not impressive numbers, I think he has talent that has not been tapped into yet. Hall transferred to Texas as a sophomore in 2022 where he only played in four games. He's also had some off-the-field problems that's a red flag, and that's the thing with some of these young guys. They're young, and they're going to make mistakes. He has some talent, obviously, because Clemson Todd in Texas gave him a chance. He does have talent. His decision-making has affected him from seeing the field. Looking at film on him, he appears to play fast, covers a lot of ground in the short half of the field, and is slippery after the catch. Has smooth acceleration and deceiving speed. Balanced and very fast with the ball in his hands. And I'm hoping Harbaugh can probably put this guy on the practice squad so that he can learn how to be a pro because he has too much talent to go to waste. And if you can get this guy head on right to go along with his potential, it can be a tremendous value pick in the sixth round. What do you think? Uh, speedster. Speedster. Yeah. I, 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 when we were doing the homework on him, I pulled up the stat sheet and I was like, wait, hold on. And I was like, <laughs> hold on, let me, I was like, these stats. And now, like, we're in this territory, and that's why everyone has to understand that these are the dart throws. These are the people right. that, it, 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 people like Daniel Popper will say this. They will say that you go for potential here, you go for traits, you don't go for stats. Right. And right. I think that's what you did here. And I mean, it shows you got a great mind. And then that's the way it goes. Mm -hmm. it, 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 he clearly, he got recruited by Bama. He got recruited by Texas. And even after he got in trouble at Bama, Texas brought him right. on. So he, this guy's got something there. 6'3", 194. Mm -hmm. He runs a 4'3", right. 4'3", 436. Um, he's quick off the line of scrimmage. He's twitchy. He can make those people miss. He, dangerous after the catch. You make that first right. guy miss on a quick quick pass, right. quick out, it's over. So, right. I mean, he, that's a house call right there. I think that maybe he does a lot of nine routes, a lot of go routes, and maybe his route tree needs to develop a little bit, but that's the only knock I have on him in terms of a late round raw talent right, kind of right, guy, right. for sure. Right. When you got guys like this and Bama gave him a shot with Nick Saban in Texas, the, the teams that recruited this guy and brought him in on their roster, that tells you a lot of what they thought about his talent. Now I know he don't have the stats to go along with it. He don't, he, you know, he don't have a, a, a big sample size for you to go by. But the fact that those teams gave him a shot and then with the pieces that you saw in that film, it shows you that these guys in college, they're still young. We, yeah. want, we want these guys to make decisions like they're 35 and they're 40 years old. But these guys are 18 and 19 and 20 years old. And you go back and think when you were 18, 19, 20. I know I did some things that I regret, some boneheaded things that I did when you were young. These guys are young. They're going to make mistakes. And that's why you see people like him will slip and be a treasure for a team because he's loaded with talent. But his off-the-field issues and his decision makings from just being immature has kept him from getting on the field a lot and putting a sample size together where people can say, hey, I think this guy can. But that's what I looked at. In the sixth round, most of the guys in the sixth and seventh round end up on the practice squad. You know, yeah, if they make the team. Yeah. So I end up picking him here. I thought after what was left, I looked at his talent and said, you know what? Even though he had some issues, even though he didn't play a lot, the talent is too. You know, in the NFL, a guy could be in trouble all season for years and years and years. Look at A.B. You know, you had a lot of guys yeah. get in trouble when they're talented. They're going to get a shot somewhere. I got one for you, Jordan Addison, last year, DUI. Like, and everyone right. forgot about that the minute he started right. putting up touchdowns, I'll tell you that. So, right. yeah, <laughs> I yeah. mean, if you want people to forget about your past, you put up some results and it That's just it. falls by the wayside. That's it. That's right. And with the 225th pick, the Los Angeles Chargers select Jordan Davis, defensive end, edge out of Mississippi State. Jordan Davis has a speed. 
He's very effective when he's in pursuit, and he shows enough fluid athleticism that he might be able to transition to outside linebacker and hold up in coverage. He has good handwork, he is tough against the run, and he shows the upper body strength to stack and shed blockers. However, Davis can get lazy and take off plays at times. He lacks overpowering strength and can stick to blocks too long. He struggles to bend and flatten off the corner with stiff hips and ankles. And Davis has to develop a counter move or two in the pass rush and also needs to make better use of his hands. But I think as long as he wants to learn and be coached, the Chargers have all the people in place to groom this guy and coach him into becoming a player that can play at the next level. You know, that's what coaching is all about. You know, everybody you come in is not going to be playing at a high level or all pro level. These coaches get paid a lot of money and they have to earn their job. And some of these guys come in can have all the instincts and have all the talent. They're very raw, not developed yeah. yet. And that's what these coaches get paid all that money for. So you get your hands on somebody like him. You see some footage. I know I've seen a lot of plays where he took off a little too much for me. Nobody plays 100% have a high motor that plays every single down 100%. But I've seen some plays, man, that he could have made and he just took off. But when he wants to play and he's motivated to play, I've seen him make big plays. He just don't do it consistent enough. I think if the right coach get their hands on him and if he want to be taught, I think he can end up being a, a good player. Stacey, I'll do you one better, man. Hey, like hey, We have... Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa. And you want to talk about how his hand movements, he doesn't have a lot of tools in the arsenal. I mean, can you think of two better teachers? We got the yeah, coaches for 100%. sure. And, and you <laughs> look what Thule did. He, Thule is a rookie, right. did the same thing last year. So, yes. you know, and I'm not comparing these two. I'm, I'm just saying 100%. it is very possible for these co for these players to be also right. be coaches. And right. who better to learn from than two of the best to do it? Khalil Mack is just – what he did last year was just unbelievable. He's he's been so I'm yeah. glad they brought him back because what he means to that locker room in terms of leadership and see yeah. the young guys getting to see how he prepare for games, how he train, how he take care of his body. That's so important having that veteran leadership on a team. Somebody yeah. of his stature, a first time Hall of Famer. I'm glad we brought him back after that year with 17 sacks. He deserved Absolutely. to be brought back. And the fact that he reconstructed his deal, it told me a lot about him as a player. And he took a pay cut. Him and Joey Bosa both shocked me. And yeah. another thing about Khalil is he did those player dinners. So, yeah, he, his leadership cannot be overstated. And it's going to go so far with this new regime. So we got the last pick of the draft. Let's see who we draft with the last pick. Oh. With the 253rd pick. The Los Angeles Chargers select Dadrian Taylor Demerson, safety, defensive back out of Texas Tech. Yes, David. The final pick for the Chargers is pick 253, and we're selecting Dadrian Taylor. When I look at film, I really like what I see with this guy. The talent is there, and he's on the right team if he wants to be coached to get to that next level. Watching film on his collegiate career, Taylor's talent not only jumped out on film, but he has 74 tackles, five and a half for a loss, one sack, three interceptions, and two fumble recoveries in his senior year alone and has a knack for creating turnovers. He improved his speed with a 4.41 at the combine, has versatility across multiple coverage schemes, is an instinctive playmaker with a keen eye for quarterback intentions leading to impactful turnovers. If he turns out to be what I think of him within a year or two, this can end up being a steal in the seventh round. What you think, Garrett? So this is a pick that I had, I did not know this man's name. And the more I dove into him, thanks to your draft and your pick here, I was so impressed by such a late round talent. And this is someone, I, I, you know, I don't know him, so I'm assuming he's falling in every mock that you see. Right. But someone who can play the slot and then in nickel packages, drop back to safety. He led all DBs with a 4 4 one you know, class leader in the 40 time, yeah. which we all know is just – it's it's – it's a measurable, but it doesn't really count for anything. But he's fast right. on the field. He's got right. great instincts. He can right. read the QB's eyes. This man is – he's got all the tools there. He do. A he little do. bit a little bit more raw. I think he gets yeah. burned a little too much. He can't recover as quick. Yes. For as yes. fast as he is, I think his hips are a little slow to turn. Right. But I think that, again, seventh-round pick, it's raw talent, and that's what you go for. So I, I, this is probably my favorite pick outside of the obvious ones. So Right. 
Well, you you know how the J.C. Jackson thing turned out. That broke my yeah. heart. And I bought two J.C. Jackson jerseys now. And then he was gone within a year, you know, and yeah. then losing Mike Davis. And Mike Davis was good. He was fast, but he just got burnt too many times. I think on paper, the Chargers team looked. I think it had a lot more to do with the horrible coaching staff that was in place and the very complex and confusing schemes that Staley had. And the talk started after he was gone. And people start saying they were going to him. They were telling him, could you simplify? You know, he didn't know how to, he burnt Derwin James. Now, Derwin James was all pro before he got there. Then all of a sudden, these guys forgot to play football. So I'm glad we're gone. It's a, it's a whole new era. We were thin at cornerback. When I went into the draft, I was trying to draft for the needs that we had. We were thin at corner. We were thin at linebacker. You know, um, the offensive line, he wanted to get a little meaner and a little nastier. We know we needed another running back uh, to back up uh, Gus Edwards because yeah. for some reason, uh, Joshua Kelly and especially Isaiah Spiller never took that next leap when the opportunity came. I remember Austin Eckler was saying, you know, come on, guys, I need somebody to take the second spot. And, exactly. and they, they never could get it done. So this team, I believe the right thing to do was to trade back. And don't be surprised if Hortiz do make two trades in the draft because he was, you know, he came from under the toolage of Ozzie Newsome and Eric DaCosta with Baltimore. Yeah. And what you see Baltimore doing the draft every single year, they trade always back. trade back to, to get more draft capital. And Lord knows we need it because we have so many holes to fill, you know? Absolutely. So, um, I like what they're doing. I like the plug-in and the the sneaky good pieces that they're bringing in. That's going to play a role with 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 Puna Ford and and Denzel Perriman. We know he still is a thumper, and um, and with these pieces in the draft, I try to address some of the needs, and I hope some people like it. You know, I'm ready for them some to tear it apart, but I'll be happy to see that some people say, "Hey, you said yourself, Dadrian Taylor. I had never heard a guy before." So yeah. No, and that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, this is a very refreshing take on mock drafts. Every time you see um, Malik Neighbors at five, and then it's yes. Zach Fraser out of West Virginia, and it's just like, okay, oh, wow, shocker, the first two picks. Right, like the, right. <laughs> and, right. and it's like, cool, I can pick the best player available at every position when our clock right. comes around to in, in these simulators. And you, you essentially just looked at names, decided what round they were going to go in and picked them and put them on the team. And I like that because I admire that – that shows the unpredictability of the draft. So this is a very refreshing take, and I hope the viewers can see that because this isn't something where you just pull up a simulator and you just hit click, click, click. Here's my mock draft. How do I do? Did I cook, guys? Yes, it's yes. not something – yeah, it's right. not something that I think people should just scoff at because I think you really did your research on this. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I, I really wanted to not do what I see everybody else doing. <laughs> like you said, everybody's first five picks, you can name them maybe not in the same order – but you know all the yeah. favorites at the top. And realistically, every team is not going to be able to do that. And I really, really believe that the Chargers will – If I'll be shocked if they take the fifth pick. And if they stay with the fifth, then I really do expect them to get a neighbors or I, – I would assume that's the only reason that you're staying at the fifth yeah. pick to get one of those guys. You know, if you don't want – if that doesn't fit what you're trying to do, and I know that it don't, remember when Harbaugh and Balky at the fallout – it was, it was because Balky went in 2013 and traded with Baltimore to bring in Andrew yeah. Hogan, which infuriated Harbaugh because that wasn't the direction he was looking to go in. And, um, you know, thank God the Spanos woke up. They gave him total control and let him do it his way because his resume says we should be able to trust him. And um, I'm happy and excited about this draft. I really am. Yeah, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you two things that I'm gonna uh, that I have in my head already for this draft. Two things that I know is gonna J Jim Harbaugh is gonna Jim Harbaugh. That's what's gonna happen, and I mean that in the best way. <laughs> and <laughs> and there will be another Michigan player that's on the Chargers roster because <laughs> I just it can't not happen at this point. It's just oh, we're, we're building it into existence. There's gonna be a yeah. Michigan player that Harbaugh picks up, and that's and even if it's an undrafted free agent, it's happening. He's picking somebody yeah. up that he likes from that team. So yes, because we have. Gus Edwards as a starting running back. If the third round get here and Blake Corman's still there, I mean, he's going to show some I, love yeah. to Blake Corman. I yeah, think yeah. And, 
Yeah. And half the fan base will go absolutely crazy online, and then they'll see that he's actually got a pretty serviceable, reputable yeah. yes. thing going on. So I think yeah. well, I think we're going to be okay there. As much as I would like the the Bensons of the world, because I think he's a phenomenal player. Jonathan, Jonathan I think it just, it, it's going to be yes, exactly. It's going to be how they prioritize everything. They, they, yeah. We already have a Gus Edwards back there, so do we need to take uh, a, yes, a top yeah. a back to it? Yeah. So right. I think that's how it goes. Right now, wide right. receiver need a little bit more work, so we'll see. Right, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, Quentin Johns could take that that next step. I think. I hope so. I I, I, I like be better. I think he'll yeah. be better, man. I think our coaching staff. I think he put together an all star cast of yeah. coaches. You know, all these guys came from winning organizations. All of them were played a role in building cultures and winning, winning successfully, winning deep into the playoffs, getting to Super Bowls, and. uh I'm not saying, you know, deep playoff run in Super Bowl this year, but I'm saying I do expect to be pretty competitive. I, I expect to, I expect nine right. to ten wins this season, and if absolutely. we do better, I'll be happy about it. It's house money after nine. I, yes, I, <laughs> I think the win loss on like in Vegas is eight, and I would absolutely, I'd put a hundred on that easy. Yes. So uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, this year is the intro year, and I think next season. And I used to hate hearing people before one season would start. Look mm -hmm. ahead, look ahead to the next season. But JC comes off the books, and we're gonna have so much money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that plus a draft, and if we get more draft picks, which they love to do, yeah, it, we're, it's just gonna be a new beginning. I was just going to say, we'll deal with this this year. And this is, again, like it's house money. We're going to enjoy the season, watch this new culture change, the shift, take yeah. effect. And a, a lot of these regime changes take about a year, some change yeah. to settle in. And then you see yeah. the results the second year. But anything we do this year, it'll be great. Well, you know, a lot of people is excited about Harbaugh because of the fact that everywhere he went, the teams were not good and he turned the program yeah. around, you know, like yeah. the 49ers had lost, had eight straight losing seasons and was six and 10 before he came there. And they were 13 and three in a deep playoff run. So people expect what he did with Michigan, what he did with Stanford, what he did with uh, San Diego Toreros, what he's done yeah. with 49ers. People is expecting a jump. And I mean, five wins. If you get nine or 10, you yeah, doubled I mean, your win total, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm excited about that. Look, man, I, I, I'm I'm happy to have you aboard, and uh, this was really fun. It's going to be interesting to see when it gets put out, uh, what people think of it. And thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you guys like this mock draft. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed Garrett, who will be joining me from now on. And uh, Garrett, I I can't thank you enough for your service and 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 for accepting the invitation and and being patient um uh with me today it was a really really long day and um i know you're you're where you are now not mentioning where you are now but i know you're tired but you stayed up late to make sure we get this in and i can't begin to thank you enough and i'm looking forward to a lot of great shows and we're just gonna keep getting better and better and hammering and hammering away yeah, I saw the uh, the podcast pe uh, group go to the the mini camp and go to the press conference because the Chargers invited them out and do all yes. that fun stuff. And yes. I was like, "What day, man? That that's going to be day. us." <laughs> yes. What's happening here is it's a new friend that I just met, and yep. it, this is going to be something that's going to be a lot of fun, man. Sitting down, yep. talking Chargers ball, going through the ups and downs of the season, yep. and doing something that I never thought I'd ever do. I like talking right. about it. I could go to the bar and talk football right. to somebody, but this this is genuinely fun, and I appreciate yep. the opportunity. Not a problem. I look forward to your mock draft, which you're going to present next week. Absolutely. Next okay. week. Yep. So we're looking forward to that. So with that, I'm going to say good night. Thank you to everybody who, who joined us and checked us out. Don't forget to subscribe, share this page with someone who haven't heard about Charters Talk 4630 and let them know that we give a lot of great content and we keep it 100 right here. Again, good night. Thanks to everybody. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you and I Thank look you. forward to I the next one. Have a good one. Take care.